I wait for dark. The black comes for me. Some people are afraid when the sun goes down. But for me, for me it's good in the deep dark. Warm and dark and close. Some people are afraid of small places, tight spots, restrictive. Not me. I'm right at home. I'm in the right place. The good, dark place. Like a baby in its womb. Like a rat in its hole. I'm okay. Ever see the black skid marks out by the highway? Ever wonder what happened? I don't. I think about the tires, the rubber, the black rubber, burning, melting, pouring down in ropes, in sheets, in long black ribbons all around me, twisting all around me, around and around, black and tight, close and dark, holding me, hiding me in the darkness. Don't you love the smell of black rubber? The way it feels against the skin? Maybe not. It's an acquired taste. Some people never get used to it. Don't really understand. Oh, you can work your way up. Black leather. Then black spandex. Then black rubber. Tight black rubber. Up against you. Pressing. Keeping. Holding. Resilient but firm. Every muscle, every inch is encased in pure black. The arms, the legs, the chest, the groin, the head. All smooth, all black, completely hidden. In my black cocoon I'm where no one can find me. No one can touch me. No one can hurt me. I'm safe in the dark. I'm happy in my hiding place. I don't have to think, I don't have to feel, and the best part is, when I look in the mirror, no one's there. Sorry to bother you around dinner time. Just going over your homeowner's policy. Kind of shocked to see you don't have very much life insurance. Yes, well, $5,000 isn't very much, Mr. Stearns. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't care what happens after you die, but what about your <laughs> wife and your kids? What's going to happen to them? What are they going to do after you're gone? Your wife works, okay? Well, <laughs> let's say something should happen, Mr. Stearns, and your wife couldn't work. Well, let's say you and the missus were in a car accident, you were left fatally injured, she was left paralyzed the rest of her life. She wouldn't be able to work then, would she? Would she? Or let's say you and the missus go and see a play one night in New York City, you come out of the theater, you get mugged, a gun goes off, you get a bullet in the brain, you're left in a coma for months and months and months, while you have to give up her job, just come see you in the hospital. Well, what happened then, Mrs. Stearns? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about it, Mr. Stearns? Have you thought about cancer? What about cancer, Mr. Stearns? <laughs> I know you're having dinner, Mr. Stearns. I know that. This is very important. Now, I have seen it time and time again. Husband dies, wife's left with no pension, no life insurance. She has a mortgage to pay off. You know, of course, Mr. Stearns, most women in this country outlive their husbands. 
Yeah, 100,000 widows in this country, Mr. Stearns. Did you know that? 100,000 widows, yes. What's that? No, she probably won't get remarried, Mr. Stearns. Very few do. Mr. Stearns, follow me for just a second, okay? Will you please? You die, you're dead, you're in the ground, all right? <laughs> Mrs. Stearns has no pension, no life insurance. She has a mortgage to pay off. Little Susie's in the hospital, some rare form of bone disease. What happens then, Mr. Stearns? Have you thought about that? Mr. Stearns, do you know how many widows in this country are homeless? Do you know how many homeless women are prostitutes in this country, Mr. Stearns? <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying that, Mr. Stearns. I'm just saying that I know that you're a loving husband and father. You only want the best for little Susie and, uh, and uh, what was your wife's name again? Huh. Louise. Yes, of course, Louise. You hate to see anything happen to Louise or little Susie after you're gone. And let's be honest with each other, Mr. Stearns. We live in a pretty strange, perverse, and disturbed world these days, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, Mr. Stearns, I could tell you stories about hookers you wouldn't believe. <laughs> What's it? Oh, yes, of course. So. Well, I, I'd, I'd say around, um, I'd say around two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure, sure. I'll be here all day tomorrow. Well, that, that's great, Mr. Stearns. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow morning around eleven o'clock then. All right, well, that's great. I'll say. What's that? Don't worry about it at all, Mr. Stearns. It won't cost you very much money at all. Look, Mr. Stearns, get back to your roast beef dinner. All right, and, and say hi to Louise for me, will ya? And, and Mr. Stearns. Take care. Okay, gentlemen, this is it. What you've been waiting for right through that door. Inside, inside, all your dreams come true. Don't be blue, this is it. Check it out. I said don't wait, don't hesitate. Run, don't walk. Show's about to start. See it, feel it. Live, living, real. In full color, completely open, fully revealed. Exposed for your eyes only. I host the dreams, your very own fantasy island. If it turns you on, we got it. Black, white, red, and yellow. Boys and girls at your disposal. Men and women behind closed doors. Until you are satisfied. Check it out. Just for you. Just the way you want it. You can't do better. Nobody offers more. Now, 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 now. No tricks, no substitutions. It's the real thing. A mental orgy and experience. For you, for them. Lose your Yourself, immerse yourself in the delirium of total abandon. All the way, all you ever wanted, all you can take. Inside, inside, come right inside and get it, get it hot, get it now. Dreams, 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 dreams. Free a shit for piss 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 a shit Hey, hey, shut your fucking ass, yeah, shut your fucking What the fuck is that? What is that? It's shit, that's what it is. It's shit on the ground. It's shit in the air. It's a bunch of shit if you ask me. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. We're living in a garbage can. That's what I'm talking about. We're living in a cesspool. That's what I'm talking about. A human cesspool. That's what it is. Everywhere you go, the trash, the garbage all over the streets. The air and stinks. You can't even breathe. You walk down the street. The piles of trash. The piles are garbage, the piles are shit, the pools are piss, the streams are piss, the rivers are, the rivers, the rivers are polluted, that's what they are. We got polluted rivers everywhere you go, you can't even swim in the river, and then the polluted rivers, they go down to the polluted ocean, that's what it does, and the ocean's all full of acid rain and oil, and then those fishes are swimming around out in the acid rain, and they're dying out there, dead fishies floating around in the oceans, and then they float up on the beaches, all the little dead fishies, and then the rats come, the rats are coming, and they, they come, they come, and they come and eat those dead fish, see, the little rats eat those dead fish, and then, and then the cats come, cats come, and they come, they come and eat the rats, see, and then the dogs come, dogs come, and they come and eat the cats, see, and then, and then you know what those dogs do, you know what they do, they shit all over the place, that's what they do. A dog shit in the horse shit in the pigeon shit in the... Living in a toilet, that's what we're doing. We're living in a living in a toilet. I say flush the toilet, that's what I say. Flush the toilet, that's what I say. Flush the toilet, that's what I say. Y'all stand on street corner, I'm looking good, I'm feeling good. I'm thinking about sidewalks and saxophones. I think it's a beautiful summer's night. I got on my brand new clothes. 
I got me a bottle of wine. I want to go out tonight. I want to party. I got on my brand new shoes. I got on my brand new pants. I got on my brand new shirt. Check that shirt out. Kiana, baby. Same as silk. Same as silk. I got on my brand new do. I got on my aftershave. I'm too good to waste. I want to go out tonight. I want to party. I want to boogaloo. I want to go break in. I say, Lord above. I stand on the street corner tonight, Lord. I am looking good. I am feeling good, Lord. Look at me. Look at me. Can you believe how good I look tonight? <laughs> you can't even believe how good I look tonight. Look at me. I'm at my prime tonight, Lord. Lord, don't put me to waste tonight. I need me a little girl. I need me a little girl tonight. I need me a little girl. I cannot be put to waste tonight. Lord, I need me a little girl. Where's my little girl tonight, Lord? Where? Where's my... When? There she is just a walking down the street. There she is just a strutting down the street. She got on those high heel shoes. She got on that swishy skirt. See-through blouse, lipstick, perfume. Hey, man, what are you going to tonight? Hold on, hold on. What's your name, sister? You're looking good. I'm looking good. We should get some Chinese food, go bowling. Yo, baby, don't pass me by. I'm a super fly. Make you fly. Where you going to? Yo, sister. Yo, sister. Yo, sister. Yo, sister. Yo, bitch, get your ass back here. I'm talking to you. Hey. Yeah, I know your type. 20 bucks, right? Who the hell you think you are? Miss America or something? Walking around looking like that? You got no right to walk around looking like that. Enticing man. Slut. Ho. Prostitute. Ruin my whole evening.
Hey. Hey, 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 you. You. You, 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 you with the glasses. Come in. No, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in for a second, man. Come in. Come in, come in. What's your name? What's your name? Mike? Mike. Mike, how you doing there? Mike, nice to meet you. I'm Sonny. This is Joey. This is Richie. Now, he's a big guy, huh? Hey, hey, Mike, 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 don't walk away from me when I'm talking to you, man, huh? Don't walk away from me when I'm talking to you, man. Just so you're walking around this neighborhood, I've never seen you around here before, huh? Huh? I just said to Joey here, I said, Joey, I like the way this guy's dressed. Now, didn't I just say that to you, Joe, huh? Huh? I like these clothes you got on, Mike. How do you say that? No, come here, come here, Mike, come here, come here. I like these clothes you got on, man. These are nice clothes. Joe, I love this guy's clothes, huh? Wish you didn't get these clothes around here, huh? Wish you get them uptown someplace, huh? Huh, Richie, look at this guy, huh? Nice stuff he's got. Hey, look at these shoes, huh? Those are the kind of shoes you want to have, Rich, huh? Look, those are nice shoes, man. Those are really nice. I like your shoes. I like them. Those are nice shoes. Would you get those out in Bloomingdale's or something? Huh? Huh? Hey, you know what we call shoes like that, huh, Mike? We call those sea shoes. Sea shoes. You want to know why? Because it cost a C note. Hundred bucks, get it? <laughs> Hundred bucks, pretty good, huh? C O C shoes, huh? C shoes, huh? You like that, huh? C O C shoes, huh? Hey, 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 Mike, 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 don't walk away from me. I'm talking to you, man. What do you keep walking away from me for, huh? Huh? Now look, you keep walking away from me when I'm talking to you, man. You're gonna embarrass me here in front of my friends, huh? You embarrass me in front of my friends, you're gonna get me angry in front of my friends. Understand me, Mike? You don't want to do that, huh? Huh? Richie, shut up! They shut your mouth, all right, for two minutes. I don't want to listen to you. Forget about him, all right? I won't let him touch a hair on your head, okay? This fight is between you and me, okay, Mike? <laughs> huh? Richie, be quiet. Put it away. Put it away. I don't want to see no knives. Put it back in your pocket there. Look, Mike, everybody's getting angry around here now, huh? Richie's getting angry. I'm getting angry. Joey's going to start getting angry in a second, huh? Huh? <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what you do. You apologize to me right now, we'll act like it didn't even happen, okay? <laughs> you just get down on your knees and apologize to me right here, we'll act like you didn't even say nothing to me, okay? Huh? And then you can go, all right? What do you say to that? Huh? Richie, shut up! Shut up! Do it. There we go. Look at this nice guy, huh? Hey, Joey, how about this guy, huh? Here we go. That's great, Mike. Just get down on your knees for just a second, okay? And, and Mike, could you do me a favor while you're down there? Just take your shoes off for a second, okay? Huh? Joey, get the shoes. You comfortable there, Mike? Huh? Everything right where you want it, huh? <laughs> I think we got a homo on our hands here, yeah, huh? You're not a homosexual, are you, Mike? Huh? Are you? Are you? You better not be walking around this neighborhood, huh? Look at your shoes, huh? Look at shoes, yeah. Look at shoes, yeah. Look at Come here, Mike. You don't want to stay down there all day, do you? Huh? Yeah. Let me brush you off your pants here, huh? Hey, we're just fucking with your head, man. You can take a joke, can't you? Huh? Huh? Can't look at this guy's face, huh? Uh, look at him, huh? Did he scared or something? <laughs> hey, Mike, we're just fucking with your head, huh? Uh, we're just fooling around with you. We are, really. Honestly. Yeah. Listen, listen, I want to tell you something, Mike. You're a good shit, huh? Anytime you need anything around this neighborhood, you come see me, you come see Sonny, I take care of you, all right? All right? Huh? You need fireworks, guns, knives, anything like that, you come see me, all right? All right, great. Hey, look, we gotta get going now. It's nice talking to you and everything. We'll see you later, okay? Huh? Hmm? Shoes? What shoes? What shoes? What? Oh, no, these? These are my shoes, Mike. These are my shoes. Joe, had these my shoes, huh? Richie, these are my shoes. These are my sea shoes. I just bought these shoes. Mike, what are you talking about, huh? Huh? These are my shoes, man. Oh, you don't got no shoes on. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, which of these guys walking around with no shoes? How about that, huh? Hey, Joe, yeah? How about this guy with no shoes on? Hey, you're the cold with no shoes on, Mike. <laughs> you're the cold with no shoes. I said, all these nice clothes on, no shoes on. Pretty funny, huh? <laughs> oh, I think we got a crybaby on our hands here. You're gonna start crying on us now, Mikey? Is that what you're gonna start doing, huh? You're a little crybaby on our hands here now, huh? <laughs> What's that word you just said to me, Richie? Huh? No, no, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Hey, 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 come here, come here, come here, Mike, come here. We don't like swearing around to you, okay, Mike? Fuck face. Huh? 
scumbag? Hey! Walking around this neighborhood, huh? Embarrassing me in front of my friends, huh? Swearing at me in front of my friends. Hey, let me tell you something, okay, Mr. Nice Shoes? Huh? You worried about not having no shoes? You're lucky you still got feet. Fuck out of here! Fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? The only thing you have to fear is fear itself. So many people write to me, they write to the station, they stop me on the street, they call me on the phone, they stop me, they say, Reverend Tim, Reverend Tim, I have a problem. My husband's out of work, he's been drinking. Reverend Tim, I have a problem. My daughter crashed the car the other day, I think maybe she lost her virginity. Reverend Tim, I got no job. Reverend Tim, I got no money. Reverend Tim, I'm sick. Problems, 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 and people write to me about them. I got, I got a letter the other day from a Mrs. R in Seattle, and she had the nicest things to say. Hello, hello to you, Mrs. R, if you're watching right now with your family. Hello to you and your family. She wrote to me, she said, Reverend Tim, I watch your show every day. You're an inspiration to me, Reverend Tim. Well, thank you, Mrs. R. But I have a problem, Reverend Tim. Ten years ago, my boy got back from Vietnam, and he was handicapped, all right? He was confined to a wheelchair. And I read that, and I thought, yes. And she said, but, but, but ever since that time, he's been down, he's been lonely, he's been depressed, Reverend Tim. And I read it, and I thought, yes. And then she wrote it, and she said, I think he's using drugs, Reverend Tim. I think maybe he's using heroin, Reverend Tim. I found needles in his bedroom, Reverend Tim. Reverend Tim, what should I do? And I thought, and I read about heroin addiction, and I said, yes. And then she wrote it, and she said, and Reverend Tim, last week you went and bought him a shotgun, bought himself a shotgun, Reverend Tim. My friend, you're going to hurt himself, Reverend Tim. He's going to kill himself, Reverend Tim. I don't know what to do, Reverend Tim. Reverend Tim, I'm scared, Reverend Tim. I'm afraid, Reverend Tim. Help me, Reverend Tim, help me. I'm scared, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm scared. Now, I read that letter from Mrs. R, and I got a angry. I got a angry with you, Mrs. R, because I thought to myself, where is the faith? Where is the hope? Where is the positive thinking? Yes, Mrs. R, you've got problems. But Mrs. R, you've got to remember something. We are God's children. We are his sheep. We are his students. God is up there every day in heaven just trying to think of new ways to help us. New ways to teach us. New ways to show us his love. He just sits up there all day long. He's got nothing better to do. He just sits up there all day long thinking to himself, how can I teach him today? What kind of lesson can I teach him today? How can I show him the right road today? He sits up there all day long. He's got nothing better to do. He just sits up there thinking to himself. And he looks down on us, sees this man walking down the street, sees him walking down the street, says, look at that man walking down the street. I think I'll put an obstacle in his path today just to teach him a thing or two. Here's, here's somebody else walking along. they got a heavy load. I think I'll make it a little bit heavier. Oh, he can handle that. Give him a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Oops, he can handle that a little bit more. A little bit more. Oops, he squished. As it says in the Bible, he who carries the greatest burden, he shall know the greatest truth. It says it somewhere. You've got to look it up. Now, this is all. She had problems. Sure, your boy's handicapped. He's on drugs. Maybe he's going to kill himself. Maybe he's going to kill you. But this is our. If you've got faith, if you've got willpower, if you believe in the good Lord, if you believe in our president, <laughs> then you can make it. And that's all you need. That's all any of us needs. And doesn't that make you feel a lot better? Well, so much our own petty personal problems. I'd like to talk to you right now about some little children who carry a burden much greater than any will ever know. I'm talking right now about the millions upon millions of starving little children in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in South America. Millions upon millions of starving little children. Those of you watching at home right now, you can see pictures of them on your TV set. Those of you here in our studio, you can see pictures of them up on the monitors there. Millions and millions of starving little children Look at them all you want. Aren't they cute? They're starving. And they're little. Now I want you to think about those little starving children for just a minute. I want you to think about them good and hard. 
And then I want you to think about that piece of pie you had last night with your dinner. You had to have a second helping of pie, didn't you? And I want you to think about that piece of pie you had last night. I want you to think about that piece of pie. Think about the star little children. I want you to think about that movie you went to see last week filled with sex and violence. What did it cost you? Five dollars and who knows how much for the hot buttered popcorn. I want you to think about that hot buttered popcorn. I want you to think about that slice of pie. I want you to think about those little starving children. I want you to think about those jewelry ass jeans wrapped around your fat ass. And then I want you to take out your checkbook. And I want you to write me a check for $18. And next month, I want you to write me another check. And the month after that, and the month after that, $18 a month. And you'll be doing everything you can, everything you possibly can, to help me do everything I possibly can to help those millions upon millions of starving little children. $18 a month, and you can personally end starvation in the whole world today. $18 a month, and the next time you want an extra piece of pie with your dinner, just go ahead and eat all you want. The next time you see some poor bum on the street with his hand up to you begging for a dime, begging for a quarter, but you just walk on by with a clear conscience because you sent me that check. The next time you see some poor little baby on the TV set, all wrinkled up and bony with the flies crawling around on his head and his stomach sticking out, but you just look at that little baby all you want, and you can hum we are the world to yourself as you're doing it, and you can look at him for hours if you want to, and you can think to yourself, it's not my fault. I sent some money. You know, there are two kinds of people in this world. There are the haves, and there are the have-nots. And among the haves, there are two kinds of haves. There are those who take out the checkbook when the time is right. And there are those who just turn off the TV and reach for the pie. Which one are you? All right, now, the first piece of equipment we want to make sure we have on hand is a nice big bucket around yay wide, so deep. Fill that right up with water, any kind of liquid you have on hand. Excuse me, just a minute. <clears throat> Whatever you have on hand, nice big bucket, fill it right up to the brim. Get your subject by the back of the neck, firm grip. Bring him right over the edge of the bucket. Just push his head right under the water there, okay? Nice and deep, baptize him. Put the fear of God into him, all right? Soak him good. And up and back down again, okay? 15, 20 seconds is good. Just watch the air bubbles. Air bubbles stop. Give it around five more seconds. And up. And back down again, okay? Firm grip on the back of the neck because they do buck a little bit. <laughs> Stay out of the way of the legs because they kick as well, okay? And up. Now you have a subject you're ready to work with. He's wet, he's tired, he's scared, okay? Next piece of equipment you want to make sure you have one hand. Nice big work table. I suggest metal work table just because it lasts longer. Get your, get your subject, put him on top of a metal work table. Strap down the legs, strap down the arms, piece of gaffer's tape, duct tape, over the mouth. You have them where you want them, okay? Just pinch the nostrils. He can't breathe. He's completely under your control, right there. Fingertip control. Okay, now, how do we want to begin? <clears throat> well, myself, I like to start with kind of a trademark of mine, kind of a simple psychological device. I'm a smoker, all right? Bad habit. I know I should quit. I like to just take the cigarette out of my mouth as I'm beginning the interrogation. Everybody's afraid of fire. Just take that cigarette out, push it right into the navel there. It goes in soft like wax. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Don't worry about that. Any of you here have been in Nam or maybe down South Africa lately? I'm sure you came across this baby once or twice. Just, just put that in there, kind of an hors d'oeuvre. What do you want to do for the main course? Well, some people like to work with rubber truncheons, telephone books, knitting needles, plastic bag over the head, Breaking fingers, breaking arms. Hey! We're not in the dark ages, all right? We have electricity. Electricity, when properly applied, will achieve whatever ends you desire. Simply take your two electrodes, nothing more than a couple of bare wires hooked up to a generator. Just take those two electrodes, press them firmly up against the soles of the feet, the palms of the hands, around the ear is good, the eyelids, the nostrils, the gums, the teeth, any cavities you might find are very effective. The armpits, the nipples, the genitalia, all very effective. Of course, I can see by looking at you that a lot of you have here worked with electricity before, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that right now. One point I always make when talking to training groups such as this is that you make sure you have on hand a licensed physician for two reasons. 
First of all, a physician will let you know exactly how much electricity is needed to get the job done. All right? We have many fine medical doctors here on the base. Be perfectly happy to let you know exactly how much juice you need. No reason to waste electricity. We're all on a budget. Secondly, you have a lot of people working around the electricity, a lot of personnel, maybe new personnel, working around the uh, equipment. You don't want anybody to get hurt. Okay, we'll finish up this seminar on public relations in Central America tomorrow evening. If you have any further questions, talk to me or your commanding officer. Excuse me just a second. <clears throat> I sat down on the couch, I was paralyzed. 
I even bought him a geranium for his room there, right? But I left it on the, in the office and I missed the coffee machine. It got all burnt up. Yeah. It's all brown now. It's no good. Yeah. So how's he doing? He's doing okay, right? Just gallstones, right? Yeah, the gallstones is nothing. It's nothing. Hey, I saw the whole operation one time on Marcus Welby, MD, right? It's a very simple operation. I can do it myself. I'm telling you, is that it? They make a little cut in the stomach like that, all right? And then they got this, like, um, that's like a grapefruit spoon, all right? They got this grapefruit spoon. Yeah, and they take it, and they, they dig out those gallstones, all right? They dig them out, they throw them away, they throw them in the garbage, that's all. They don't even keep them, you know? You figure, for the amount of money you pay by that operation, at least give you the gallstones, take them home, show them to the kids, give them to the dog to play with, something like that. Forget about it. They don't even let you have the gallstones, all, all that. Merv Griffin had that operation. He was on the show again in two weeks. If Merv could be on the show again in two weeks, Frank can get out of the hospital in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, sure. Of course, when Frank went in, oh, he thought he was going to die. Remember that? First, he thought he was getting appendicitis. And then, then he thinks he's getting a heart attack. Then they tell him he might be getting cancer, right? His, his, his cousin just died three years ago, cancer. His mother passed away last year, cancer. Everybody in that family's dying of cancer. Even a dog died. Remember the little dog they used to have there? The little poodle, you remember that? Frank's poodle. You don't know what he, the one that died. The little, you remember, the little, what was his name there? The little, uh, little French poodle there, Frank's dog, uh, you. Anarchy! <laughs> Anarchy! <laughs> Ed, what's the name of Frank's dog? <laughs> yeah, the one that died. Snowball, snowball, the little snowballs, little pink pool, he was a dying old pink, remember that? Look your hand. Yeah, he died. I don't know what from though, but he was nice, all pink like that little pinky pool there. He was cute, huh? <laughs> Vincent, cut me like a thin slice of that pie, for me, will you please? Yeah, just just a thin. Just a thin. Just a Bigger than that for crying out loud. What are you trying to do to stop me in that? Come on. <laughs> Give me some of that whipped cream to go with it, too. I don't know what it is. I can't eat a piece of pie without whipped cream. You know what I mean? It just doesn't taste right somehow. I think you need the whipped cream that lubricates the crumbs. Makes it go down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Huh? What operation? What operation? I didn't have no operation, okay, Vincent? I had an exploratory. Exploratory is not an operation. Exploratory, they just open you up. They look around inside there. They close it again. They don't change nothing, all right? They said I was in perfect health. All I got is a, all I got is a little tiny benign tumor in there. No, benign. 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 You're thinking about malignant tumors here, Vincent. It's two different things. It's two different things. No, it's not. Vincent, malignant tumors is very, very bad for you. You should never have malignant tumors. They're terrible. Benign tumors, you can have all the benign tumors you want, all right? They don't hurt you. They're good for you. They show you're alive, you're living, there's things growing inside of you, things are happening. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what do you do anyways? Everyone gets cancer these days. It's in the food you eat, it's in the water you drink, that dysoxin stuff, and the PCB and the DDT and the acid rain. All that stuff gives you cancer. Every day they think of new things, put it in the food, give you cancer. You know what I'm saying? You don't remember, you're too young, you know. When you were, you were a kid, you're, you're too young to remember. When I was a kid, Vincent, when I was a kid, we didn't have all this craziness. You think, uh, you think asbestos, all right? We used to have asbestos all over the place. Nobody ever died from asbestos before. We used to play in asbestos. <laughs> nowadays, nowadays, you go down to the drugstore, you want to buy yourself a couple of aspirins, a couple of Tylenols, so maniac, he puts arsenic in it, all right? You want to buy yourself a carton of milk, they put salmonella in it. You buy yourself some Girl Scout cookies, they put ground glass in it. You don't know what you're eating anymore. <laughs> if you don't eat nothing, if you don't eat nothing, you get that, uh, you get that, um, that starvation disease you get there. You know what I mean, the starvation disease, the what you might call it there, the, uh, you know, the, uh... Angie! <laughs> Angie! <laughs> what was the name of that? We're putting the water up, for crying out loud. I'm asking an important question here now. Washing the dishes, 24 hours a day. What's she doing in there, anyway? Four dishes, she's been in there for two hours. Angie, get out of the kitchen! Angie! What was, what was the name of that disease, that carrot copy, girl? What did she have? <laughs> You, you were reading in the People magazine last week. 
The People magazine in the bathroom. You had it for two hours. You were studying it for crying out loud. What was the name of it? What? <laughs> the anorexic. The anorexic. You get the anorexic, all right? So if you eat, you die. If you don't eat, you die. I'd rather eat. That's the way I look at it, huh? <laughs> huh? No, I'm not going. I'm not going. Look, I went to the wake, I went to the funeral, enough for these social functions, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel bad for Louie and everything. He died young, poor guy, and poor Mary, she's such a young widow. We gotta go over to the house, sit every night, watch, watch black and white TV with Mary now? Is that what it's gonna be, huh? Louie was too cheap when he was alive by a color TV set. Now Mary's gonna have black and white for the rest of her life, come on. I got better things to do than watch black and white TV every night, you know what I'm saying? Too many things, huh? What was it? There's a show I watched that night, you know my set, on the color. Uh, uh, Charles Bronson movie. Uh, the, the, the good one. The one where, you know, he's got the big gun, he goes all over New York, he kills all the Puerto Ricans, you know. Yeah, 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 it's a good movie. Yeah, yeah, I like that movie. Very interesting movie, yeah. Yeah, no, I got, I got on the cable TV. On the cable. You know what they say, Vincent? You got cable TV, you never gotta go out. What should I go out for, huh? Why should I leave the house, huh? I got everything right here in the comfort of my house. I never leave the house. Right here, cable TV set, color, 150 stations, whatever I want to watch, right there on the TV set, huh? My own sofa, nice and soft, nice and comfortable. My own kitchen, plenty of food in the refrigerator, doesn't cost me anything, huh? My own bathroom, plenty of toilet paper, never runs out, little spray can, make it smell good. What should I go out for, huh? I stay in the house. It's safer, it's cleaner, it's more sanitary. You know what I'm saying? Turn on the TV set, stay in the house, lock the front door, piece of Sara Lee cake. <laughs> what else do you want out of life? Anyways, I figured grab all the gusto you can get. Right here in the house, you know what I'm saying? Plus I got the, the videotape machine, I just bought it the other day. Yeah, yeah, it's in the bedroom. Come on, I'll show it to you. Come on. Yeah, it's great. Oh yeah, you can watch whatever you want to watch, whatever you want to watch, you know? Like, like last week, Ronald Reagan made a big speech on TV, remember that? Made a big speech, I record the whole thing on my videotape machine. Anytime I want to watch Ronald Reagan, anytime at all, night or day, middle of the night, Ronald Reagan on TV, huh? You can't beat it. Plus Angie, she's got the Jane Fonda exercise tape, you know the one? What, me? Forget about it. <laughs> I'll tell you something though. And Jane Fonda and those leotards, huh? I wouldn't mind having to work out with her, huh? <laughs> Stop story. Well, the Statue of Liberty celebrated a birthday today. Unfortunately, during the festivities, a small plane collided with her head, causing the torch to fall 150 feet, crushing six tourists visiting the monument. <laughs> Armenian terrorists strike again. Four employees of Hassan's Turkish bath on East 10th Street were pronounced dead on arrival. And three policemen were fatally injured in an early morning raid on East Village heroin factory today. Over 10 pounds of the deadly white substance were recovered, now safely in police hands. <laughs> on the local scene, fires in the South Bronx have claimed four families. 16 people, including five battered children, have been burnt to death. <laughs> A massive car accident on Route 115 has taken the lives of at least five people. Five more may be dead. Their bodies have not been recovered from the flaming wreckage. <laughs> and finally, 
an elderly couple has been found. Starved to death in their home in Queens, they reportedly had been living on Carvel ice cream. On the weather scene, on the weather scene, tornadoes and thunderstorms continue to rip through the Midwest. The death count there stands at 60. Sports, Freddie's going to have a full videotape footage of that fatal bean ball up at Yankee Stadium this afternoon. And on the lighter side, on the lighter side, a father has shot and killed his son for playing his ACDC records too loud. We'll have more of that story and more news right after this. Remember last year's Christmas sale? Well, don't go away! We're doing it again in July! That's right! Retarded Ernie has decided to beat the competition and his Christmas sale in the summer! All the equipment, the lowest prices! JVC Richter Speakers, 195. Pass over for Joey, 195. Pioneer Zim, 995. And more! Come to Ray Tiny Storm, the lowest price in every CB, Centerial BB, Baby Nice Johnny Soul, Silly Walk Breakers and Tapes, ABBA, 699, BGs, 399, Edo, 299, Stones, 99, and more! In Manhattan, this new location in Soho, Retarded Ernie, his prices are fucked up! <laughs> This is Mario at Mario's Real Italian Restaurant. We got clams, we got lobster, we got spaghetti, anchovies, lasagna, soup du jour. We got the best cooks in town, the best sauce, the best garlic bread. And don't forget Mario's Mamma Mia All You Can Eat Salad Bar with all the radishes, carrots, shrimps, bacon bits. <laughs> Lettuce, cottage cheese, Swiss ware, celery sticks, Swedish meatballs, cucumbers, croutons, and ten different dressings you can eat. You want to eat, you want to eat till you die. Come on down to Mario's Real Italian Restaurant, Route 115, the Old Colony Turnpike behind Bamberger's in Paramus. We'll feed you like your mama used to. Mind ya! <laughs> Take a look in the mirror. What do you see? A slim, shapely, sensuous female. A woman who attracts men when she walks down the street. Or do you see fat? <laughs> Under the neck, around the thighs, around the waist. What about your wrists, your ankles, your teeth? Look carefully. Fat is everywhere. If you're fat, you need help. You need Fat Fighter. The new proven formula that dissolves fat as it accumulates. Now you can eat as much as you like all day long and not gain a pound. Just take two fat fighters before you start eating, then eat ice cream, cake, candy, butter, potato chips, spaghetti, beer, thick cream soups, pies, heavy breads, french fries, syrups, Puddings, lard, milkshakes, chocolates, pancakes, waffles, pate, oil, grease, pizza, cookies, and not gain a pound. Fat Fighter is all you need, and it's guaranteed. And remember, Fat Fighter contains no harmful ingredients, just pure dextroamphetamine sulfate. Fat Fighter, when you're fat, fat. Hey, you're listening to Rocco, the voice of Disco and WFRO in New York City. I hope you're all hot and ready for some hot disco dancing, because we got the hits for you tonight. I know the girls are hot because I feel hot. And when I feel hot, everything I touch gets hot. I'm touching some hot new records. Just came to today, you'll be hearing this weekend at the Disco. It's by the Hell's Kitchen Gang. It's about a loser. You better not be a loser. Disco, watch the red. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Rock your head, rock your 
buddy, can you help me up for a second here? I just slipped and fell down. Can you help me up for a second, huh? Buddy? But I just run in the marathon here. I just fell down for a second. How about it? What do you say, huh? Huh, mister? How about a veteran? What do you say, huh? I served in Korea, buddy. I helped save this country from communism, you know? That's not what your country can do for you. That's what you can do for your country. Remember that one? JFK said that. Then they blow his brains out. <laughs> <coughs> hey, mister, what am I, invisible here or something? You, the guy at the bus stop with the Wall Street Journal. How about it? What do you say, huh? Huh? I'm not talking about a fire hydrant here, you know? How about it, huh? Only take you two seconds. Huh? What's the matter? You're afraid you're going to miss your bus to Connecticut? Is that it, huh? Look, if it comes while you're helping me, I'll tell you, all right? Only take you two seconds, huh? Huh? I know you can hear me, buddy. Don't act like you can't hear me there, huh? Huh? Come on, what do you say, huh? How about it? What, are you in a big rush to get home? Is that what it is, huh? What, are you going to rush home and skim the pool? Is that what you got to do, huh? <laughs> Drive the wife to the Amnesty International meeting? Is that what you got to do? Oh, huh? you can't help me out for two seconds there? Yeah, how about it? I know you can hear me, buddy. Don't act like you can't hear me. I know you can hear me. What, what you think you're better than me or something, huh? Is that what it is, huh? What, what, you got a gold American Express card? Is that what it is, huh? Makes you better than me, doesn't it, huh? What, what, you live the fine life, do you, huh? Gourmet food, huh? Fine wines, huh? I know a little bit about wine, too, okay, buddy? Nothing special about that, okay? Huh? Huh? I know you can hear me, bud, huh? What are you thinking about? Gonna go home, have a nice little dinner now, huh? With the wife and the kids and the dog and the gerbil, is that what you're gonna do? Huh? Nice little roast beef dinner tonight, huh, maybe? Mmm, that'll be good, won't it, huh? Oh boy, nice little roast beef dinner. I like one of those, huh? Yeah, yeah nice little roast beef with some, some gravy on it, maybe. Mmm, mmm, some, some, some baked potatoes with it, maybe. Nice little baked potatoes there, those would be good. Yeah, I like those a lot, baked potatoes. Maybe some, um, Maybe some asparagus tips over here. Maybe nice little tender asparagus tips tonight, huh? Huh? You got asparagus tips tonight, buddy, are you? Huh? Huh? Is that what you're gonna have, huh? Is that why you can't pick me up for two seconds? Because you're gonna have asparagus tips tonight, huh? Huh? Is that it? Huh? I know you can hear me, buddy. I know you can hear me. I know all about you, okay? I know all about guys like you. You're a bunch of bums, that's what you are. You're a bum. Look at you standing there, you bum! You dirty bum! Huh? With your London fog raincoat, huh? Huh? Nice, nice. Well, you got a briefcase there, too? Mmm, mmm, nice. Would your wife give you that for Christmas, huh? Is that... Boy, look at your initials on it, too. Oh, boy, well, uh huh? Combination lock, too, huh? Well, oh, oh. What, what do you need a combination lock for? Your secret agent or something, huh? You're all the same, you know that? All of you. You're all the same. You go home, you walk in the front door, you all say the same damn thing. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> Honey, I'm home. Honey, I'm home. Honey, boy, you should have been there. We took that sucker down. It was good. It was real good. Mm -hmm. 95 miles an hour. When a big old guy never knew what hit him, just push him right off the side of the road. <laughs> I see him back there, right? I see him in my rear view mirror, right? I see him back there. Cars all pushed in by the side, right? All the scratch marks and vented in, right? I couldn't resist. I see him standing around by his car, right? I bang a Huey, get back beside him, get out of my car, right? Guy standing there by his car, he's really pissed off, right? He's really pissed off. He's standing right like this, standing like this, like. Come here, boy, I want to talk to you. <laughs> I says, I want to talk to you, too. Bing, bang! Ah!
Hey, guys, we're here on him. Bump it up, rubber on that road, make a new set of tires. I think it's going that fast and hard, I get high. Must be doing two, three hundred per. Billy was pulling so fast, he broke a knuckle. You know that Billy just pulling those beers, pulling those beers, sucking back that fruit. Billy's in the back seat, drunk as a skunk. <laughs> He's got beer all poured all over his head, beer all over the back seat. He's just like about two feet of beer right in the back seat, just sloshing around like this. Right? Beer cans floating around and all that shit, right? He's chucking the empties at the little kids as we're rolling by on the highway, right? I'm going down the highway, must have been doing 150, 200 miles an hour, right? I'm going down the highway, like right? this, right? Billy's floating around in the back seat, right? Like this. All of a sudden, we see this girl walking down the street, right? I, sl I slows down next side of her, right? She's walking along, she she don't see us, right? She's got these groceries, right? She's walking down the street, she she don't see us, she's walking along. Walking on, walking on, walking on, right? I'm driving on Nick Saturday, right? I'm driving on Nick Saturday real slow, right? Give him that, give him that old, that old look I like to give him, right? Just driving along, <laughs> driving along, you know, give him a little, a little tongue right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just driving along, right? real slow, real slow. She acting like she don't see us, right? Also, Billy pops out the back window. Hey, baby! Hey, baby, come here, I wanna kiss your face. <laughs> She says, kiss my ass, right? Billy looks at her ass. He looks at her face. He says, I can't tell the difference. Ain't that Billy something else? He's like, I can't tell the difference. Ain't that Billy some kind of comedian? I tell you, he's something else, ain't it? Ain't he some kind of humorous, I tell you? <laughs> Wish I had a machine gun. Could have killed me even more deer out there. Killed me three deer. Got to leave two behind in that room on the car for him. Just took this one big bloody buck, right? No, no, the trunk was all filled up with dead rabbits in that room for there, right? So I just, just took the buck. Big bloody buck, slept the other two in the woods for the wolves, right? Took the buck, stuck it right on the front of the car like this, right? Tied on with some rope, right? Blood's all coming down off the buck. Billy's in the back seat, he's passed out. I'm going down the highway, must have been doing two, three hundred miles an hour, right? I'm going down, like this, right? Blood's all coming up off the buck. Billy's passed out in the back seat. I got the windshield wiper going like this, just so I can see past the blood. <laughs> I go to this gas station, right? Driving to the gas station, cars completely covered with blood from the front to the back. <laughs> Boy standing there is going, what will it be? Gas or ammo? Oh! 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 Boy, we're going to have a good time, don't we? Don't we? Ah! Good evening, dear. Nice to have you with us. Hello, how are you tonight? How you doing there, son? Feeling better? That's good. How you doing there? Nice to have you with us. Hello, how are you tonight? How you doing there? Good evening, dear. Welcome aboard. How you doing there? I want to ask you all to do something for me right now. I want to ask you to take a look at the person sitting next to you. Go ahead. Don't be shy. Just take a little bit of look there for a second. Jake, can we have a little bit of house lights there for just a second? Just so they can take a peek at each other there? Just take a look. That's fine, Jake. You can turn it down now. <laughs> now I want you to take a look, and then I want you to answer questions for me. What do you see? What do you see sitting next to you there? You see a potential success story? Do you see a potential millionaire sitting there next to you? <laughs> what does your neighbor see when he looks at you? What do you see when you look in the mirror in the morning? What do you see there? You see a potential success story? You see a potential millionaire? That's what we're here to talk about tonight. Success! S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S -S, success. There is only one person in this world who really matters. Yourself. It is your job, it is your daily task to do one very simple and obvious thing. Look out for number one. The world follows certain rules, certain laws. First law has been the same since Adam and Eve. Survival of the fittest. If you want the best for you and yours, do you remember that one fact? Okay, for example, I go to work every day. Excuse me. I go to work every day, I'm given a job and I do it. I do it the best I can. I go all over this great country of ours and I talk to people like you. Good, solid, all-American white citizens, all right? That's my job. I talk to these people about success. At the end of the week, I'm given a paycheck. That money belongs to me. I earned it. I deserve it. I don't ask for charity. I don't ask for a handout. I don't go down to some government office and ask them to pay my bills for me. No, sir. I am a member in good standing of the free enterprise system, and I am proud of it. Now, I used to be ashamed that I owned a beautiful home with a swimming pool. I used to be ashamed that I owned two beautiful cars, a Mercedes, and the Eldorado you saw parked out front. I saw many of you admiring as you came into the building. <laughs> I used to be ashamed that my children went to a school free of disagreeable elements. 
that we lived in the neighborhood free of disagreeable elements. I felt guilty that we ate roast beef on Sunday afternoon. So let me tell you something, friends. We don't live in the Garden of Eden, all right? We don't live in the Garden of Eden. We live right here on earth. And some will suffer while others prosper, as it is written in the Bible. Now, if you could ask the most successful man who ever lived, what is the secret? Ask Andrew Carnegie. Ask John D. Rockefeller. Ask Bob Hope. <laughs> ask them, what is the secret of success? Tell me, tell me, Bob, what is the secret of success? You know what they tell you? They tell you there are two kinds of people in this world. There are the haves and there are the have-nots. Do you want to be a have? You want to live this world from the bottom looking up or from the top looking down? Because if you do, you better get a piece of what belongs to you. You want the good things in this world? You better get out there. You better hustle and you better do it right now. You better get out there. You better get a piece of it. You better start working at it. Because if you don't, if you don't do it, you're going to be a have-not. If you're a have-not and you're hungry, no one's going to feed you. You're hurt. No one's going to take care of you. The great storm comes from above and destroys the very home you live in. No one can face it. No one will care unless you care. Unless you take care, take care, number one. All kinds of people in this world, all right? They're the poor, they're the foolish, they're the stupid, they're the crippled, they're the elderly. <laughs> what do you do about them, all right? They've always been around. They're always going to be around. The bleeding heart liberals think you should take care of those who can't take care of themselves. The haves think you're responsible for the have nots. You're responsible for the one person, yourself. You are in this world as a single individual. You will live your life as a single individual. You will enjoy your own joy. You will experience your own pain. Life is a struggle, friends. Man is an island. Love. Love, my friends. Love is loving yourself first. Thank you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Always giving you the same old story. Always telling you the same old story. One plus one equals two. Two plus two equals four. You say, you see what you, you reap what you sow. It always starts the same way. It always ends the same way. I don't, 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 I don't got any answers. I don't know what the answer is. You come and you go, and you come and you go, and you take it, you leave it, you make it, you need it. It's human nature. It's human nature. Man against man, man against nature, man against himself. Beginning, middle, end. Climax. Anti-climax. Soft plot. Got to read between the lines. See, yeah, we know the way things are now. Oh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. When I was, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, everything was different. Bread, 10 cents a loaf. Eggs, 50 cents. No plastic bags. No plastic bags. No plastic bags. Wax paper. No pollution. No pollution. No conspiracy. Everything was simple, easy to understand. I can't understand. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't make any sense out of it. And then the guy, 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 the guy says, get out, the guy says, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. You get out of here. That's what I should have said to him. You get out of here, huh? You, you, you get out of here. You get out of here. I got no place to go. I got no place to go. It's crazy. It's a madhouse. It's a funhouse. It's a jungle. It's dog eat dog, man eat man, eat or be eaten, hunt or be hunted. It's the letter of the law, the law of the land, the land is a jungle. You see what I'm saying here? You follow what I'm talking about? No, 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 no. Look, 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 look. I gotta look after myself first. I gotta worry about me. They, they want you, they want you to give to the tax, give to the starving children, give to the abandoned babies, give to the blind people, give to the poor people. I can't worry about those poor people, okay? I can't, I see them on TV. I see them on TV. I can't worry about them. I gotta worry about me first. I don't worry about me. And, and, and then they say, they say, they say, they say, they say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But we'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. We, we got a safety net for you. We got a safety net for you. Jump in a safety net, huh? That's what they say to you. Jump in a safety net, huh? Jump in a safety net. Hey, here's, the, here's the safety net. Jump in the safety net, huh? Hey, here, here, here's some free cheese to go with you, huh? Here's some free cheese. You like cheese? Here's some more cheese. Have some more cheese. Here, here's a space shuttle for you. You like space shuttles? Here, here, go take a ride, huh? That's what they're telling you, huh? Get lost. That's what they're saying to you, huh? I don't need no cheese, huh? I don't need no ride. I just need a cup of coffee. I need a, a sandwich. That's all I want. I, I, I give up. I give up. I'm, 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 I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it. It's just getting hotter and hotter and hotter every day, day in, day out. You've got to stand in line. You've got to stand in line for hours and hours and hours. You get to the end of the line. You get to the end of the line. They say, 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 no more. No more. No more. We don't got no more for you. No more for you. For who? For who? who? Who's getting it? Who's getting it? I'm not. I'm not getting it. You win and you lose, and you're sinking and you're swimming, and I'm sinking, see? I'm sinking. I'm 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 in a lifeboat. I'm in a lifeboat, that's what I am. I'm in a lifeboat, I'm in a lifeboat in the middle of the ocean, I got no oars. I got no wars. I'm, 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 I'm a little piece of ice that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Every day, 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 every
That's what I'm doing. I'm falling in the water, and the water is filthy, it's polluted, it's disgusting, and then and, and, and I can't swim. I can't swim. Sink or swim, fish or cut and bait. You need to pot the problem, you pot the solution. What's the solution, huh? What's the solution? The bomb? The bomb? Drop the bomb! Go ahead! See what I can! I'm not waiting for any packages. Huh? Drop it! I got no all expense paid vacation coming up. Drop it! I'm no little orphan, Annie. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. You got a tomorrow, you can have tomorrow. I don't got no tomorrow. I know what you're gonna say now. I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say tomorrow, 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 tomorrow is more. That's what you're gonna say. I know, I know you're gonna answer. You're gonna answer, you're gonna answer more. More, 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 more. More. Tomorrow will make some more money, everything will be just great. Everything will be just fine. We'll make some more money, then we'll make some more houses with the money, then we'll make some more kids put in the houses, then we'll make some more TV sets, put them in front of the kids, then we have some more TV stations for the TV sets of the kids in the houses with the money. I know, I know. Tomorrow more, 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 more TV stations. That's what we need. We need more TV stations for the kids. We need more TV stations, radio stations, UHF, VHF, cable TV, satellite TV, mini, maxi, take them, PBS, CBS, cable, I know what you're saying. I know. I go on the subway, they got the music playing all the time, they never shut it off. I go in the supermarket, they never turn it down. I go in the phone, on the hold, they got the music playing in there, and in the elevator, go in the elevator. Yeah, 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 I got something to say. I got a few last words. This is what I got to say. You don't know. You don't know anything about me. You don't know anything about the world, about reality. Got it? I mean, who the hell are you people? Who are you to say he dies? Because you're not right. My peers, my jury of peers, you're not my peers because I look down on you. You and your fat ass existence. You and your TV brains. You never been anywhere, you don't know nothing. All you know is what some idiot on the boob tube tells you. So maybe I killed those girls. So what? I didn't, but what if I did? Insignificant people die every day. You don't seem to be too concerned when there's a war going on, or there's children starving in Africa. What about that, huh? 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 You're responsible for that, and you're responsible for putting me away. I mean, first of all, I'm innocent, okay? But second of all, I'm somebody because I have seen the world. I have been in the desert, man, and I have seen the shining star. I roll with the kings, man, and I roll with the best. I know what the truth is, and the truth is, is that I count and you don't. It's like when you're a little kid and you step on ants on the sidewalk. You know they don't count. It's the same with me. You're just a bunch of ants. You're not even alive as far as I know. You could just be a bunch of robots. You might be robots filled with blood and guts, but you're still robots, see? See, I can see that. I understand that, because I have seen a shining star in the desert, man. I have rode a Harley at 150 miles an hour, and I have seen reality go by. I have been through it. I have tripped in places you don't even know exist. I have shot dope in the Mekong, man. I have looked death right in the eyes, and I saw stars and stripes, and no one can dispute me. Those who have tried are very sorry now. They're not around to talk about it. Because I'm always ready, see? There's a war coming on. This is only the beginning. Only the strong will survive. It's going to be kill or be killed. Hand to hand, mind to mind, but I'm ready, see? I don't pump iron for nothing. I'm building up. Kung Fu, meditation, yoga. I'm ready for anything, anything. I passed every test. See, I will survive because it all passes through me. It's up to me to hold it all together. I am the center. It's like cosmic, like oriental. You gotta be able to go all the way out and come all the way back in and keep your center. Like if there was a candle here right now, I could put my hand over it, I wouldn't get burnt. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel any pain at all, because I can take it, see? It's like people think I'm a junkie because I stick a needle in my arm. I'm just testing myself, see? Making myself harder and harder, going up further and further and further into the shining star. You people. You people living up your safe, protect little lives. You think you know about things? You think you can tell me about things? You can't tell me about nothing, man, because I have seen it all. I have shook hands with the devil. And you want to come here? And you want to fight with me? And you will lose, man. You will lose. Because I am the strong one. Strong one always wins. That's a law of the jungle, that's survival of the fittest, and I am the stronger, physically, mentally, spiritually. <laughs> see, that's a big joke, see? See, you're just here because I'm here. You just came here tonight to see me. I'm the one. I'm sitting up here, you're just sitting out there scared. There's the killer. We're gonna kill the killer. You're afraid of me. 
Like, Jesus, you think you just put me away and that's the end of it? And that's what you're wrong, man. You can't get rid of me. Because I'm everywhere. I'm in the air. I'm in the ground. I'm inside you. Shining star doesn't go away. It's always there in my head, burning, shining in my brain. When everything's gone, when everything gets blown away, I'll still be here.